Hey everyone, I'm Kelly with the Suburban Soapbox and today we are making the best meatballs ever. These are made with three different types of meat. So I have a ground beef, sausage, and veal. You're gonna blend it together with some aromatics and lots of flavor and then bake them in the oven. These meatballs are moist, tender, and juicy and you are going to love them. So to start our meatballs, we're going to take a pound of ground beef, and I like to use something more lean-ish, like maybe an 80-20. Um, you don't want to go too lean because you need that moisture to make your meatballs juicy. And then we're also going to use about a half pound of Italian sausage. I like to use a sweet Italian sausage, and you're going to take it out of the casings. And if you want to use more sausage, you can. There's a lot of flavor in Italian sausage. If you want to use a um, spicy sausage, you can also do that. And then I also like to use veal. So veal is an incredibly tender meat, and I love the flavor of it. You can certainly use another pound of ground beef and skip the veal altogether or you can use more sausage, or you can use ground pork, which is also a great substitute for veal. Um, ground pork is a little more lean, but it's just as tender, and you're gonna get some great flavor from that as well. So we're just going to blend together the meat until it's pretty well combined in the bowl. And you really just wanna break it up um, not so much smash it together, but you're breaking up the big pieces because we want to get ready to mix in all those aromatics, the onion and the garlic and the Parmesan. And if you over mix your meat, it's going to be tough, not tender, and not juicy. And we're going to prep the aromatics. First, I'm going to wash my hands as I launch meat across the kitchen. Okay, now that I have clean hands, we're going to put that aside and we're going to cut up an onion. And this is the super easy part because you wanna get a lot of flavor into those meatballs, but I hate when I have a meatball that has big chunks of onion and big chunks of garlic in it. Um, so we're just going to cut an onion into quarters. And I like to use like a Vidalia onion or something sweet. So just peel off the skin and we're gonna cut that onion into quarters and toss it into your blender. We'll do the same with this half. And into the blender. Next, we're going to add a few garlic cloves and there's no rule here. I know my recipe says like three to four garlic cloves, but if you like a lot of garlic, put a lot of garlic into your meatballs. If you don't like garlic at all, don't put garlic into your meatballs. We're gonna go with three because my son's gonna be eating these and I don't think he's gonna want a lot of garlic in there. And one more. Okay, and now we're gonna take a half a cup of chicken stock and we're gonna pour this in with the onions and the garlic and that's just going to make kind of like an onion paste. That sounds tasty, right? onion paste. And we're gonna blend it until it's smooth. Okay. And we're all set. And don't stick your nose in there. Word of caution. So we're going to pour the onion mixture in with your meat. And you can see it's all nice and thin. So you're not gonna have the big chunks of onion and garlic in there. We're going to add one egg into the bowl and some panko breadcrumbs. I advise you to not skip this step. I'm adding some fish sauce and the reason I'm adding fish sauce is because it gives it a great umami flavor. It makes it taste really meaty and rich and it, like it's been cooking for days. 
So we're gonna add that. If you can't find fish sauce, or you don't wanna use fish sauce, you're not gonna follow my rule, um, you can certainly use Worcestershire sauce instead. You're gonna get the same um, flavor, just not as much punch. And we're gonna add a little bit of pepper. And we don't need to add salt because we're going to add some grated Parmesan cheese. And that fish sauce also has a lot of saltiness to it. So you're gonna grate about a cup and a half of cheese. And if you don't like a lot of cheese, you don't have to put that much in there. I know cheese is calories, but fat is flavor. I like a lot of cheese. That looks about right. And just throw that into the bowl as well. And if you don't wanna get your hands dirty, you can use a pastry blender or something else, a fork to mix everything together. But really the best way to do this is with your hands. So we're just gonna mix it all together until everything is combined. And again, try not to like squeeze it. You wanna kinda of leave the meat a little looser, not super loose where it's gonna fall apart, but you don't want your meatballs to be tough. And you'll see everything starting to come together. That egg is gonna be your indicator. So once you don't see the yellow yolk anymore, you're probably good to go. Okay, so once you have your meat all mixed together, it should look pretty much like this. You might still have bits of cheese. If you wanna add some color, which I always like to do, you can chop up some fresh parsley. It adds some nice green to the meatballs. Makes them look really pretty for pictures if you're like an Instagrammer and want to take pictures of your food, which I know everybody does these days. We're just going to put that right into the bowl. And we're going to blend it together real quick again. Not a whole lot. Again, you don't want to overmix your meat. It's best if you do it with the cheese and everything, but I didn't. And now we're going to form the meatballs. You do wash your hands quite a bit when you're making meatballs, as you may have noticed. You're going to take about two tablespoons, about that size, of your meat mixture and just roll it lightly in your hands. Again, very important to not compact that meat. You want a nice, tender meatball that's going to be juicy and melt in your mouth. If you wanna make giant meatballs, you can do that too. It's just going to increase your bake time just a little bit. So these meatballs are fantastic for freezing. So if you wanna go ahead and make a double batch, they make a great weeknight dinner. So make sure you bake them all the way. You don't wanna freeze them while they're raw. I mean, you can, but they're gonna take longer because you're gonna to have to bake them from frozen. So now that the meatballs are done baking, we can finally eat them. So I'm just gonna put a few in the bowl. And what I like to do is top them with a little bit of my stovetop marinara, and stovetop spaghetti sauce. A lot of stovetop spaghetti sauce. Who needs the spaghetti when you have meatballs that are this good? And then I'm going to just grate some Parmesan cheese right on top and we'll finish it off with a little bit of chopped parsley. Now it's time to eat. Hmm, they're so good. So much flavor. There's nothing worse than a dry meatball with no flavor. This just tastes meaty and tender and moist. And the sauce just makes it. So make sure you check out my stovetop spaghetti sauce to go along with these meatballs because they're fabulous. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. And for more easy recipes, be sure to visit thesuburbansoapbox.com. Thanks again.